The warm spring sun has melted the last patches of snow. The air smells like springtime, the common snowdrops, the first harbingers of spring, sprout from the earth. A new circle of life begins around the Mura River, awaking thousands of flowers, sprouts and connecting various animal species. A new generation of descendants will rise from the arms of the Mura River, as it did many times before. We invite you to discover the embankment of the Mura River and gain an insight into this beautiful circle of life. We are aware of the fact that frogs are green, but can they also be blue? Of course, one of the exceptions is the male moor frog. Being brown during most of the year, it becomes provokingly blue during the spawning season. It gathers in low and overgrown oxbows near the Mora River, making loud noises to attract females. Soon after the frog has laid eggs, tadpoles mature and grow into a new generation by autumn. The diverse water land surrounding the Mura River represents a valuable habitat to other amphibians like newts, toads and green frogs. When holding the camera underwater, we could discover frog spawn of the European tree frog feeling. We've encountered a large amount of the common toad's frog spawn on the shore of the gravel pit. The common toad is the first among others in Slovenia that awakens out of the hibernation and lays the frog spawn. Simultaneously, we can observe the male toads, which are only starting to prepare for the spawning season. The grey heron is circling elegantly above the poplars. It nests in groups of tens of pairs. The nest lies in the treetops. The breeding season begins in early spring before the trees become green. The colonies are most lively when the young, which are constantly fed by the parents, are maturing. The feeding process is accompanied by loud shrieking, so the colonies are always very vivid. The nest activity can also be observed on the ground. The plants are covered with white excrements and axles can be found between the leaves. Our journey takes us further to the meadows of daffodils. In the 19th century, the poet's daffodils extended along the river, from Gornja Radgona to Raskrižje. In the beginning of May, thousands of flowers whitened the landscape. Due to intensive cultivation, dunging with manures, fertilizers and frequent mowing, the daffodils have become rare and endangered. Nowadays, they can be found only near Verge. There we can admire their elegant blossoms along with other meadow plants. 
This place enables us to realize that extensive meadows are a real treasure of biodiversity. One of the interesting inhabitants of meadows are butterflies. During our visit, we can admire the clouded Apollo, which can be identified by its white wings covered with black spots. It's smaller and less colorful than its more known relative, the mountain Apollo. The clouded Apollo mostly lives in mountain areas and is also typical of the lowland around the Mura River. Females can be identified by their mating plug near their abdomen. Flying in an upright position with widely spread wings, they eliminate pheromones that attract males. If the mating is successful, the eggs will be laid on a suitable, nutritive plant. This way, a future generation will be ensured. Another interesting experience will be the visit to the groves near Zgornia Kunishcia, since we'll be able to see the southern festoon, one of the most beautiful butterflies belonging to the Papilionidae family. The southern festoon can easily be identified by its yellow-black pattern with few red spots. Sitting on blades of grass with its wings widely spread, it basks in the spring sun. If we're lucky, we'll be able to witness the female during the process of laying eggs on the leaves of the European birthwort, a nutritive plant for caterpillars. Unfortunately, the southern festoons are becoming more and more endangered since the meadows are often deserted. What would be necessary is nothing more than constant traditional mowing. As the meadows are becoming warmer, it'll be quite pleasant to continue our journey through the nearby wood. Before entering, we can observe the hairy lungwort, which only grows in the lowlands of eastern Slovenia. The flood groves are extending along the Mura River in the form of a narrow belt, which is the remainder of a large lowland forests. Situated within agricultural land, the groves represent an oasis of life and the backbone of ecological stability of the entire area. We are currently standing in a grove overgrown by oaks and beeches. Typical of this area are also the pedunculate oak, the European hornbeam and the white elm. In the air is a scent of garlic which is spread by ramsons or bear's garlic. Its white flower head attracts various insects. The colorful undergrowth is supplemented by the morning widow and the yellow archangel. The silence of the oak wood is suddenly interrupted by loud shrieking. With some effort, we find its source, the middle spotted woodpecker, which is typical of this area, but also rare and endangered. As all woodpecker species, it excavates a nest hole to lay eggs. After the incubation, the breed is constantly fed with insects, which are found on or underneath the bark. Another inhabitant of the oak woods is the stag beetle, one of the most known bugs since every schoolboy or schoolgirl can identify it by its large mandibles. Less is known about its way of living. The larva can be found in oak trunks eating wood and boring wide and long tunnels. The development from a larva to a grown bug takes up to four years. While walking the path through the wood, we are slowly approaching the river. The structure of the wood is gradually changing. As we are crossing the oxbow, we arrive in groves overgrown by willows. Typical of this area is the white willow, as well as the black and white poplar. In many places, we can observe the European ash and the Norway maple. Mighty trees with giant trunks and widely spread branches 
make us feel like being in a mysterious jungle. Such conditions are suitable for our largest wood mushroom, the sulphur shelf, which can be found on the willow's trunk. The wild arum, having softly shaped tubes which surround the column-like shaped inflorescence, can be seen in the undergrowth. The ostrich fern, which has caught the camera's attention with its beautiful and funnel-shaped leaves, grows most beautifully in the flood groves. We are now at the embankment of the Mura River, where we can see its channel with rapids, pools, gravel pits, side branches and oxbows. In Slovenia, the river is known as a typical lowland river with typical meanders flowing east. Where is its source and where do its waves disappear? The source of the Mura River, which is 1,898 meters above sea level, lies within the Huatauan National Park in Austria. After 444 kilometers in Legrad, Croatia, it flows into the Drava River. We are enchanted by the murmur of the crystal clear and cold water that rapidly flows over a rock shelf and into the valley moments after its source. Higher up the slope there are several minor sources. Tiny silver jets are emerging into a larger current that joins the main channel after a waterfall. Again, let's focus on the lowland part of the Mura River, its groves, gravel pits and oxbows. We follow the river further east, where the meanders disappear beyond the horizon. Only now we can become aware of the perfection and mystery of its water cycle. Its currents will join with others and flow into the sea. The sun heats the sea, water evaporates into the sky where it condenses into clouds. The water falls back onto the Alps as rain. Beneath the steep slopes the water reaches the source, the river is reborn and flows directly to the lowlands of Pomuria in order to water its groves, quench the birds thirst and fill the springs. This beautiful water cycle enables the preservation of the extraordinary natural resources of the Mura River. Within this area, we can find tens of different environments which are habitats to hundreds of botanical and animal species. Since several are in danger of extinction, this environment is their last hope for survival. To the immense environmental significance, the Mura River is defined as Area Nature 2000. 
it is part of the European network for conservation of significant areas. Moreover, the Mura River is part of the UNESCO program Mura Drava Danube Biosphere, which is being realized in five neighboring countries. Having such high natural potential, the Mura River and its surrounding land has great opportunities for natural, continual development and to become a real European eco-region. The Mura River is a habitat to another endangered species, the kingfisher, which is a real jewel. Like a shiny arrow having the color of an emerald, it shoots above the river and suddenly dives under the water surface. When in sight, it holds a fish in its beak. Truly an extraordinary fisher. Its nest lies at the end of an almost meter-long tunnel dug into a steep sandy shore, where it can peacefully breed its young. Near the tunnel, it chooses a high forked branch in order to observe the surrounding area. Steep and unregulated banks of the Mura River or its side branches and oxbows are the kingfisher's true natural environment. Oxbows are river lakes formed during greater floods when the river changes its current. At first, the remainders of the old channel are still connected to the river through side branches. Eventually, they are separated, which leads to the formation of lakes. Oxbows represent a natural habitat to amphibians and various other organisms that need still and stagnant water for their survival. Oxbows situated in the wood are shaded. Only little light reaches the water surface. Consequently, only few botanical species can survive in such environment. The surface of an oxbow in the wood Murska Shuma is covered by a green carpet, the spotless water meal. Among typical species, we have also encountered the tiny, barely two millimeter large leaves belonging to the smallest duckweed and the smallest flowering plant in Slovenia. In order to find and admire its flowers, we would need a glass lens or even a microscope. Oxbows in the open are shone on through the whole day. Consequently, they represent a habitat to more diverse botanical species than the previously mentioned. While the embankment shoals are covered with reeds and rush, we can find a variety of interesting plants on the water surface. There is the European white and yellow water lily. The embankment offers shelter to the European frogbit. One of the most interesting plants is the floating water moose, being the only one in the country. It grows on the water surface, the roots are situated under water. Such water environment is a true paradise for frogs, which can remain in the sun for hours and hours. Midsummer is also the appropriate time for watching the dragonflies. 
we were able to see the four-spotted chaser, which beautifully exposed itself. The old and shallow oxbows provide a suitable environment for the extraordinary water soldier, its shape resembling an agave rather than the typical plants. The narrow green leaves are covered with spines and arranged in the shape of a funnel. Its roots are floating in the water and growing out of the lower part of the plant. When the water level rises, they transform to floating plants, which can entirely cover the water surface. If the water level declines, they strand on the dirty ground and continue to grow as land plants. To a certain extent, smaller gravel pits, especially those having gently sloping river banks and fords, can form at the same locations as those containing river branches. Within several years, they become a vegetation-rich habitat teeming with water birds. They usually include the mallard, the common coot and swans. The great grasted grebe is a much more rarely spotted bird. It builds nests that float in water in order to protect them from floods. As soon as we glance under the water surface, an amazing sight awaits us. Among the many varieties of fish, we'll often find the pumpkin seed, a brightly colored species of fish. It was brought from America to Europe in 1887 and has since then been regarded as an invasive species. In the 1960s, the signal crayfish was brought from America to Europe and has lived in the Mura River and its affluence ever since. Stemming from the Indian subcontinent, the Himalayan balsam grows in many areas of the riverbank. It is an annual growing in lush areas and can be recognized by its typically large pink blossoms. It usually grows near the yellow-colored Canada goldenrod. Invasive, non-native species have been outgrowing the native ones, which may pose a serious threat with regard to health, economy and the environment. Due to accumulated slime on the ground, the oxbows are becoming shallow and are slowly transforming to marshes. At the last stage, they turn into land and the only remainder of a river is an insignificant basin. The oxbows are gradually dying off, consequently various species lose their habitat. Due to fortification of shores and building dams, the Mura River cannot change its current and does not shape new oxbows. In order to prevent such a valuable natural environment, the old oxbows can be renewed by deepening and connecting them with the main channel. Through the past years, the project Bio Mura has renewed some of these oxbows by building water chutes to redirect the water to the old channels.
The European beaver, weighing up to 30 kilograms and being approximately one meter long, is the largest European rodent. Being extinct in Slovenia in the second half of the 18th century, it luckily began to spontaneously populate Slovenian rivers after 1998. First it populated the Kolpa River, followed by the Trava River. During the last several years, it has also been spotted along the Mura River. The easiest way to track a beaver is by searching the typically shaped tree trunks from which they build their homes, known as lodges. Branches and trunks are placed on the shore. The beaver constructs a cavity within the pile that can be reached through several hidden tunnels that can be entered underwater. The beaver is most popular for building dams. Its masterpieces can now be admired on the Mura River and its side branches. Our visit to the beaver dams was marked by the approaching autumn. Migratory birds have already left the region. The trees are changing their colors and leaves are playing in the wind. The nature started preparing for the wintry rest as if being overwhelmed by the summer and in need of a short break in order for a new evolutionary cycle to begin in spring. Our stroll along the Mura River has come to an end. We invite you to visit the river again in order to learn about it and gain new experience. You may also support our efforts to keep the river unharmed. The Mura River is endangered and it needs friends. <laughs>